but I want to cover why I chose the, the NASDAQ today versus the ES. So if you probably noticed this down here, okay, it's a real secret indicator. Only the best hedge fund traders, market makers, the elites, the, the, the folks that pull the strings to make the markets go up and down, they have this indicator down here on their charts. I know it's hard to believe, right? It's hard to believe. <laughs> yeah, I'm just being facetious. If you look at this, and we're going to add the use of the ES. Okay, so all I did was compare. And if you're using TradingView, up in the upper left-hand corner up here, you're going to see like a little plus symbol. If you click on that, that's your compare uh, utility. You just type in ESH2023, and it'll plot over, well, you got to click new pane, new pane, P-A-N-E, and then it'll plot it below the instrument you have open, since we're talking about NASDAQ, which is NQH2023 for the symbol in trading view, you would be plotting it down here. Now, for non-US students, you can be utilizing the US100 up here. And then hitting the compare feature up here has like a little plus symbol on trading view up in this area. Look up on when you're doing your own, pause the video if you want to go check and see what I'm talking about. And then you would do to get the, the overlay like this down here for ES non US market, the CFD for US 500. And then it's going to plot it as a line chart and you click over here that little gear and where it says inputs oh, I'm sorry style you're gonna be doing candlesticks okay and address them as you see here it's gonna come up as a default on line you don't want that you want the current the candlesticks okay so that way you can compare and contrast for SMT divergence now with a vertical line everything during with this low they match all right, if we drop a vertical line on the chart here. Let me thicken that up and darken it up for you. Okay, so this is our reference point. So wherever I drag this, it should have matching highs and matching lows, okay? Now watch what happens when I drag to the right, going forward in time. Okay, right there, we have this high higher than that high. Slightly higher than that high. See that? ES is not showing the strength to the upside that NASDAQ is here. So keep marching forward, going forward, and right there, we can see that this high and this high, NASDAQ is lower, but ES is higher. Doesn't mean anything yet. Watch what happens. We have now this short-term high that's been taken out by this high. This high is this high here for NQ. Okay, so NASDAQ's high is here on the one minute chart and ES's one minute chart high is here. Over here, look what we have. We have relative equal highs. See that? But we have a stronger, stronger higher punch through by NQ. So NASDAQ was higher here. After, here's the key point, a short-term high was taken and then a fair value gap was left okay after digging into this one minute buy sign and balance on the efficiency or gap okay and we expect the market to turn here so we have relative strength analysis on our side that nq or nasdaq futures was the better buy and again why the short-term high here is much more prominent of a break here than it is here. These are relatively flat. This, I'm looking for the relative strength leader. One that wants to break out higher, faster, stronger. Okay, and while they both pretty much move in sympathy with one another, the more sharper technical picture was seen in the NASDAQ. Notice that there is a small little gap here very small. Let me zoom in here without messing up any of the relationship. 
between the two. There's a small little gap right there, but look how sloppy it is. See how it completely goes down below it? We don't have that here on NASDAQ. Okay, we don't see that. Why didn't we see it? Because it's stronger on NASDAQ. NASDAQ had much more relative strength comparatively to that of the ES, E mini SP. So I'm going to trust this one because visually I can see that fair value gap. It's much more prominent here versus the very lethargic looking fair value gap down here. This one's much more energetic, it's much more obvious, and it is also with a market that's moving more explosive to the upside. Okay, so I want to be in this market buying this fair value gap right there and trusting that it will not completely close in. Why? Because we want this to act as what? A breakaway gap. Why should it be a breakaway gap? Because we've already traded down into this one minute fair value gap in the form of a buy side and balance sell side and efficiency. Real quick for your notes, if you see a candle that's moving like this one way and it's going up like this, so from low to high, and it's an up close candle, and it's one single pass like that, and it creates a fair value gap. That fair value gap is labeled a buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, BISI, okay? B I S I. If the candle opens and trades down and creates a fair value gap, that one single candle or fair value gap is labeled and categorized as a SIBI, S I B I. Sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. Okay, so that way you know now for your notes that's what you should be having in there. BISCs are bought for longs or traded to as targets when short. SIBIs are sold short or targeted from longs. Find some support, creates a small little gap in here. This is a measuring gap. So we had a breakaway gap down here. And this is a measuring gap. So from this long to this point here, that's essentially half of the move. And then we have buy side up here. So we can target the bulk of our exits just above this high here because we have a confirmation that this isn't getting filled in. And you've already seen several examples of me doing this. This is how you determine and classify real time a measuring gap. Okay, and measuring gap is classic technical analysis, but every time I've ever looked at books and courses and educators, they never really taught how to you know, utilize it. They can talk about it after the fact. They can see it in hindsight and show it to you in books and sell courses and things like that, but nobody I've ever seen ever be able to identify them real time and understand when they're going to stay open, when they're likely going to be filled, those types of things, and especially with electronic markets like this or 24-hour markets, where we don't have gaps in the same sense that we did when we had open outcry. And I've talked about this a lot when I was doing Twitter spaces, those little podcasts. Uh, that idea of gaps or inefficiencies in price where there actually is no trading at all, that's a real liquidity void. Things like this get called a liquidity void. And that's unfortunate because it's not a liquidity void. This is a buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. It's buy side imbalance, that means it's moved too aggressively one side to the buy side and it's inefficiently delivered for sell side. So what is it? Buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency, which makes it a busy. I made these names up for that very reason. The algorithm creates these little areas here and we want to see this type of thing stay open. Okay. Other educators out there, I know Mr. Chris Laurie, he, he has a group of people and he's always talked about these things as a liquidity void and they tend to fill in. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. My logic tells you when they don't and what you do with that information, okay? Um, I did not learn liquidity void from Mr. Chris Laurie. Uh, I just used that term when I was on Baby Pips, people that were familiar with him. They said, oh yeah, that's a liquidity void. Chris Laurie teaches it. I said, okay, well, I'll just go with that. So it saves me the time of having to teach something about that particular thing. I'm just gonna go into more detail about where they form and how to utilize them. But anyway, you know, obviously we're in, PhD level you know, technical science now here on this channel and you're seeing a lot more precision, a lot more understanding and, and reasons why things are the way they are. 
so we can hone in on opportunities that the algorithm will present to smart money. And who is smart money? People like me and you while you're learning. Once you understand these concepts, you'll be able to go out there without me talking about it, without me hand-holding. You'll be able to see it. You'll anticipate it. You'll know exactly what the market's likely to do more times than not. That's all you need. That's your little edge. And you wait for specific times of the day. And you wait for all of the signatures that you look for to justify your trade. 